Glass Academy. We're making a rosetta. Just a small bit of glass. Going down a decorative stem. Tonight is God with Night here at the Glass Academy. Welcome everyone. Joey in the house. Woo! In the house. And also Chris in the house. That'll be fine. Number two. When we go to our, kind of got a mobile camera. When we go to our intro, we'll switch it back up to our camera on wheels. All right, what are they using this for? They are using this for a goblet we'll be making in the future. But right now, it's time for an intro. Here we are. Jake's controlling the camera and the bench. I don't know how he's doing that, but somehow he is. And now we're adding on a Navolio. It's goblet night here at the Glass Academy. The warmer upper is in progress. And it's a hot one. We got both cameras set up tonight because we're gonna bring you some interviews while the camera cools down a little bit. But we've got some really nice goblets coming your way. Joey in the house, Jake in the house, Chris will also be mm -hmm. jumping in. I had it. No, it just fell on the ground and broke, so it's broke off. And here we go. What's happening, Jake? Not too much. It's gonna be something pretty special here. We got this swirling triple rosetta of oleo situation. What color is that? I really like it. Is that the tank blue? That's our tank blue on top of crystal clear. Ooh wee, baby, I like that one. Joey's gonna be whipping up a blown foot. We're gonna do something a little special here that we were thinking might be pretty cool. It's gonna be a clear foot on here and we'll put a blue lip wrap. So we're really getting the blue accents all along this piece. This is the Goblet Show. Number show 231. Number two, 31. 31. Hey, who's new on our show? Welcome to the Gathering Point. We did an amazing festival this weekend. I fully expect to find some new friends here because we did an outdoor festival that had like 300 some thousand people in attendance. Now it sure felt like they all came by the booth, but they probably didn't. Joey shaped the foot, Jake is attaching it. Mm. Mm -hmm. But right after it's attached, it has to be heated up. Why? Because if it's not heated up, it's too cold to shape and form. All right, other camera set up and good. You match the blue board. This is a blown foot. Was it going in the garage? Yes, momentarily. It will be. And the garage is on. Yeah. The garage is a piece of equipment in the back. It's real hard to tell if it's on or not, but they got it set up earlier. The garage sits at about a thousand degrees. And the glass yeah, is sitting there, there hang out until they're ready to use it. If you're new to the show, tell us where you're from. Just gives us an idea. I see some Canada, Sarnia, I think. Ann Arbor. Carolina. North Carolina, Thanks. there's someone new. Maybe. All right, North Carolina. Love that spot. 
So he's putting a lip wrap on it now, out of the opalescent blue, on a clear blown foot, you guys. It's pretty nice, fancy looking action. This is the bottom half of a Venetian goblet that he's making right now. We're gonna be uh, finishing this guy up and then putting it in the garage so that we can make the cup top. Looking real good. Yeah. That heat source he's heating up in for you folks who are new is cooking at about 2,000, probably about 2,400 degrees. And there's no glass in there at all except for the glass that Jim is working on right now. And he has to keep going back in there and crank the thing open because it cools so quickly that he can't get it all done in one heat. It's already starting to stiffen up now, so he's gonna get in there and get it nice and hot again, but it's starting to shape up really, really nice. That blown foot that Joey brought over uh, really blew out nice. Yeah, it's kind of like the Sasquatch, you guys. It's a total Sasquatch foot, which AKA Bigfoot. Yeah, when you take it to Collaboration Station, if I'm gonna hand somebody a giant honker of a foot like this they may just be thinking about the cup top as something were we talking about humongous Jimmy Buffett, the first warm-up maybe it could be like a be low bowl or like a combo or something style yeah i don't know if they're talking about it. this is probably going to have to be a margarita piece you guys because you know what happened bless his soul jimmy buffett passed away everybody and we know it so this is a nice little commemorative piece that we're doing for him right now because flip-flops Chris has his flip-flops I got them on. on just because I know. Look, I even got the Jimmy Buffett line. I think we knock it off. What does that mean? See that, guys? That means yeah. you're spending good time in the sun with your flip-flops on. Yeah. Well, so wait a minute. Are we thinking about this right? We're going to knock this off? I put it on the punny and leave it on the punny in the garage. Ah. Uh -huh. Right? Okay. Because well, we want to put the cup top like that. There would be no place to grab this, would there? Well, you're, you, you're saying you want to punty the, the cup, the margarita top on the inside and stick this on the bottom? You can put that on a paddle then on the, on the shovel and put it in there. Yeah. You can grab it by that bottom of oleo. All right, grab the shovel. It's hard to believe, but we talk about everything we're going to do before the show starts. But there's always still in the moment plans. Well, I mean, uh, these pieces are all off-hand blown glass, guys. This is what not a piece that's ever been made before. It's one of a kind. Tonight's goblet night. That one's going in the garage. Can you what describe is, what the garage is? The garage is a piece of equipment that's cooking at about 1,100 degrees on the inside. And you park a piece of glass inside of there and you can forget about it until you need it. It keeps it right below the moving point of the glass so that what you can do is you can make a piece of stemware. It really works uh, really well and it was originated for stemware. People over the past probably I'd say 30 years have metamorphosized the use of the garage into other things. If you're gonna make a bull head with horns, you could make the horns separate and put them inside the garage and then bring them out and stick them on, which is pretty cool. So. Jake just made the bottom half of that margarita glass, which you guys saw. And this is a celebratory margarita glass for Jimmy Buffett, uh, who did pass away, I think, was it yesterday? A couple days ago, couple days ago guys. So uh, it's a bummer. But his music and his style and all of his parrot heads will live on forever. For parrot a long heads. time. Are we making parrot heads? All right. So what are we doing now? Well, we did see a little bit of treachery on that one, so we got to think about a game plan because um, there was a crack in the foot. Well, we really? didn't see the yep. treachery. So we got to decide if we want to try and utilize that and pick it up and use the stem in some way or start fresh. I didn't see a crack. This is foot. Goblet Show, so we're going to be doing some treacherous stuff, and treachery is going to be awry. So how about we pull it out and leave it on the ground and show them how quick it, in the blue, how quick it would break and do another one. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. 
All right, so make a cup top and then uh, put some. We could make like, what if in this show we just did like three or four cup tops in a row and we all just put loaded some cup tops in there and then made stems to match? What I think is, I think I'm going to make a margarita top right now. And all right, build off the stem off of it, alternating between clear and blue bits. We got to stick with We can't be changing up the plan on uh, our buddy who passed away. We got to. That's right. It's true love. So we're going for a margarita glass for Jimmy Buffett right now. Right now. Folks. That's right. Right. <laughs> so what's happened to everyone? We got familiar names as always watching the show. You got Donna. And Donna. We got Kathleen, Vicky. Kim, Lori. Hey, everybody. Carol from Canada. Canadian Carol. A lot of classics. And some new names as well, too. Sky. Is that the shipping queen? That might be the shipping queen right there, Robin Carson, folks. Robin. Here now, here now. Susan, Morna. Let's see. Question. Let's look at do the you table ever why we're doing the setup? Because All right, we'll we answer that, that question later. <laughs> well, I didn't realize you had a question ready. Go for it. Uh Morna had a question. Do you draw out every piece on paper before actually making it, or do you wing it? The really important pieces we draw out, you'll see on this most recent experimental show, Joey drew out a really nice piece, and then we went ahead and made it. But uh, you always need to, on uh, something new and something fresh, and if it's pushing the boundaries, it's a good thing to draw it out on the floor. For not only yourself and your own mental thought process, but for the rest of the team to understand the situation. Let's show off one of those margarita cups so they get an idea of where this is going. Yeah. Like the green one, maybe there, number four. Oh, baby. These were all made at Maker's Mark with the Glass Academy team out there with our mobile unit this weekend. Chris and Oliver and Michelle. It was a super successful situation. And I don't have too much to say about it because I wasn't there. So I'll, so I'll let you step in. in. All right, why don't you grab the blue one and show that one while you're talking? Number seven, guys. This is a classic. Check this guy out, all the tentacles. We got a little board out there with all the heat, so we couldn't just make a plain margarita glass. Oliver and I got buck wild, but this was at Arts, Beats, and Eats out in Royal Oak, Michigan. We are sponsored by Maker's Mark to uh, blow glass out there and completely uh, talk about our synergy of recycling glass and how they recycle and we recycle. And we created all of these pieces out there. This particular uh, margarita glass is a beauty. We got this gorgeous looking number two. Check this out. It has some really amazing, this is the Joker special. We got the purple and the green. And this thing is really comfortable. I couldn't touch it, but look, your finger goes underneath that tentacle and your thumb goes up here and it's a perfect fit. So anybody who's got a hand the same size as me. Chris, your mic. This is it. Right. So it's a nice one. Wendy, these pieces aren't for sale yet. As many of you guys know, they go live at 630. The table goes live and uh, it's kind of a mad race to the fresh products. We want to give you guys a consistent start date so we're not just like, oh, it's live. People know you log on, you get going on the website, on the Gathering Point page, 6.30. Yep. These pieces are live for sale. 6.30, guys. All right, well, we're done with the table. Testing, testing, Bess, can you hear me? You're good now. I think the mic was just a little too far from your face. Woo! It's a sweaty one. We'll have to zoom in on those ears a little later today. I don't hear you at all, Michelle. Is she your mic she's on? She's got really small ears. Is your mic on? Is Are you talking, Bess? Is your mic on? or? Yeah. Okay. So Bess has a mic today. So any question, she's ready to google -fy it. google -fy. All right, well, this is the first of the blue glass that I've blown, guys. So it's going to be my uh, inaugural blowing the blue opal glass. And this stuff is creamy. We've had it in here uh, for, what, about a week, Jake? About a week, yep, a little over a week. It's been a uh, 
a really nice time. We've been designing. Last week we had a great pumpkin show, as many of you guys were a part of. We started designing the signature pumpkin. And uh, this week we're starting to think about ornaments. We're also still thinking about those pumpkins. And uh, it's kind of interesting timing uh, that we finally got the uh, blue tank melting because now, ironically, is the time that we have the most production uh, to be done here at studio. So... We're kind of lining it up and we're doing what we can with the people that we've got and we're going to see kind of how it goes. It's production time, folks. Chris is going into the pineapple mold. You guys may or may not have seen that, but he put this texture on here that's just absolutely margarita heavy. And I'll show that mold off in a second here once it cools down. But it did just have some 2,000 degree glass all up in it. Trying to find the best angle to bring you guys the action while keeping the camera Hello. cool. So later slightly, today we very are going to switch to the second camera. Good. We've got a little interviewing we're going to do. Talk about the different shows that we had going on this weekend. And with that note, how was Hello. everyone's Labor Day? Slowly. Who went out and did something exciting Good. for Labor Day? So you hear me telling Joey to blow lightly, blow a little harder in the piece because I'm really trying to get it out correctly where I have that bulge in the bottom of the margarita glass, which is the perfect little spot for an extra little Don Julio toss down in there before you pour the good limey uh, margarita tastiness in there. Is that classified as the margarita bulge? I think it might be the margarita bulge. Uh. We probably have to ask Sharon. I think she knows about that. Hmm. Go ahead, blow. Let's see if we can get this bulge to enlarge a little bit. That's right, folks. <laughs> Ow, blow. <laughs> uh, there are some art teachers who are going to be watching this Beautiful. show. They were asking if it was a family show. All right, how about show? a clear of oil, Absolutely. Joey? Just like our Renaissance and demonstrations and our Maker's Mark Collab, Royal Oak Arts, Beats and Eats, uh, special demonstrations. Everything's family friendly, folks. Uh, we don't say any explicit activity or anything like that. Yeah, thank you. Just, just confirming. Just confirming. Kinda feels like I got a stiff neck <laughs> <laughs> because of this darn microphone. All right, look at that sweet gather Joey just brought me. Oh boy. <laughs> Michelle, somebody it. said that they had a Too great sad. Labor Day. They had a great what? Juicy. Labor Day because they spent it at the glass boat blowing booth at Renfest. Yeah. Well, Renfest was a lot of our regular customers, which is super cool. We went, uh, uh, Bess went out and saw Renfest for the first time. Jake's all dressed up in his signature all right. outfit. How about a blue? Half the team went to Arts a blue blown bubble Royal stem. Oak, and that's about 45 minutes away from the studio. Totally different crowd. It was really cool to meet all these new people, and some of them I know are like a blown football, just a, uh, not too big though. Pretty small. We don't want this to be an 18 inch tall margarita glass. Is it tiny? Is it pronounced Lacaris? I'm realizing now after spending the whole weekend in the front row, I never pronounced your name one time. Great fan of ours, bought a couple pieces, and actually we've got a ridiculous, nice puff and I'll trade it was you the up, second Joey. most successful of a dragon stem goblet that we made out at the Renaissance. Uh, she had purchased this last weekend, and actually it was the weekend before that, but got it this weekend. Ouch. Super cool custom orders out at the Ren Fair. I've tried to take some videos here and there, and we'll do some posts of a little bit of an update of what we all made, because just like we're referencing them here at Maker's Mark, um, you kind of get into a certain kind of mojo when you're out at a different place. And we've got a mobile unit that Chris was working out of. I was just talking with him about uh, the tech and the, the way that furnace was working and the way the glass and the glory hole was all working and the way he got used to that whole process. Which JoJo you were working with? Which JoJo he was working with. And uh, I think that, when, uh, yeah. When you go out to the Renaissance Festival, it's a whole brand new set no of equipment. Air. and. This is home base, folks. We stream at this hole here Shredding. every week because we know what we're doing. We know how we're working. Look at that beautiful setup. 
when you go out to the rent fair, we got to get used to that too. You got different tools, you got different equipment, and it's just a whole nother ball game. You know, when I don't have you guys in the screen, in the shot, I wonder if they think it's Chris talking or if it's you. I don't know. But I like to get those close-ups so they can see what's going on. The close-ups are the bomb diggity. Listen to that squeakiness, folks. Got a those nice of you that are... leg in here. Yep. Uh, after a couple margaritas, it always tastes nice to have a turkey leg. So, uh, appropriate to put a turkey leg stem on here. Grazie. Hot beeswax oh, on hot Joey's beeswax foot. Is no good. Nothing better than a little hot beeswax. This really? is a really good feeling. The only thing better than hot beeswax uh, going down the inside of your sock or shoe is a piece of hot glass, guys, right? 100% will agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I think we're all on the the right it's like, page. It's like a great jump scare. Yeah. Everybody needs one of those every once in a while. Talk about a jump scare. I actually had the jacks sitting like this at the bench this weekend, and I sat down on the jacks, and that was a serious jump scare. Got the burnage. I was up real fast. I never moved that fast before. It was hot out there. It's like tools. Well, we were blowing out in Royal Oak at Maker's Mark. The tools, you could barely touch them. They were so hot. There's a certain point of the day. It's like 1230, just after lunch, when you That'll eat a nice uh, burger, whatever you eat before or after lunch, during lunch. Mm -hmm. And you come back, and you're working at the second hole over here. It's usually when we have two benches of production going on. Good. And the light will reflect off of our sweet, uh, whatchamacallums, skylights, and it'll blast straight on the bench. And the extra heat, obviously, the glass on a hot day, and then you got sun blasting right on the tools. You almost can't hold them. You're That's something we were look? talking with our apprentice, uh, young mm -hmm. Oliver out at the Renaissance, our Renaissance yep. apprentice, and we told him that. You're going to have to really toughen up out there, Oliver, when you come to the studio because your tools are going to be hot. Well, that hey, you small know uh, pineapple mold out for Joey, the for Joe show. Show. One I, of the things we were going to ask was, what is everybody's favorite Jimmy Buffett song? Jimmy Buffett song? Yeah. Nice. Like, what's your favorite one? Cheeseburger in Paradise. Mm. How about you, Jake? I don't know. Can't think right now. Don't have the answer to that one here now. I did want to say that uh, this is the kind of weather here when it's 92 degrees outside that will inspire Olivers, the Olivers, to get their hair trimmed. <laughs> they both have like middle to, middle to lower in the back long Locks. hair. I was actually just laying in bed the other night thinking about reminiscing my long hair and just being like, wow, it feels so good that I could just use the trimmer and just trim it real quick and doesn't really matter and whatever. It's a good time, but. I don't remember those. <laughs> <laughs> I do back in high school. <laughs> if you guys are new to the show, they're talking about some other employees that work here. We actually have two Olivers that work at the Glass Academy. One is physical in Dearborn. He came out with us to Royal Oak Buffing this it. weekend. Yep. The other Oliver is only a Renaissance person. He only works once a year out at Renaissance. All right. Good. Joey blew into that pineapple mold, Chick and Chris is going to do the shaping now. Blow. If there's anyone new on the show, if you have a question, all you have to do is type it in the chat. If we can't get to it right away, there is a group of fans. They're called the Glass Academy Addicts. They can answer your question as well. So mm, I really like how that step went opalescent, the turkey legs. It's beautiful. Really, really nice. It's Nothing just, better than a really uh, white opalescent turkey leg. I'm ready. So Joey brought over the hot foot that Chris is going to add to this piece. Hello. Good. 
He talked about not getting too big, so he's going to monitor that. The pieces that you're seeing on the show we do sell. This is the warmer upper. Then we'll go over to the table, show you what we got on the table, some features, decorative aspects, things that we like about them. And then we'll make something else. So we'll be probably putting some clear handles on this when the time's right after we punny it up and finish the top. The other thing I was going to say, too, is when you're making a margarita glass, you really are want to make sure that you make the foot bigger than you normally would think it would be because you are going to be opening that margarita glass up pretty wide. Do you know much about the mixture that uh, brings this color to life, Dad? You ever mix this yourself? I've never mixed any opal blue myself. I try to stay away from the opalescent colors just because there's a lot of chemicals in them that aren't really good for you. So I stick away from opaque colors in general. What turns them opaque? What, what kind uh, of chemicals are you talking? I think a lot a lot of bone ash does, but I honestly don't know because I've never mixed it. I only mix transparent jewel tone colors. Yeah. Uh, but that's why you buy them from the professionals because they know how to do it right. So who would be those professionals? Oh, the color companies like Olympic Color Rod, a couple of companies over in Germany, one in the uh, over in uh, on the other side of by Australia. So what Chris is getting at is is we like to blow the glass. We like the artistic part of it. What we don't want to do is spend the time making the color. Now, Jake, I have a question for you. Okay, Out at the that. fair, someone mentioned Drew and Janine, and said they were mixing their own color. Is that true? It's true. All right, so what are they mixing? What They've been mixing colors? the most exciting thing I've heard them since my most recent conversation with them is this beautiful, uh, I forget how they phrased it. There was a really cool name for it, but like a, like a transparent, but like a pearlescent sheen. I don't think it was opaque, but it was almost like a iridescent gold, but it was clear and you could still iridize it, but it would just like metallicize the glass a wee bit more. And a are they doing bit. anything special with it? Like a, so a certain round of products or they're just wanting to explore colors? I'm sure they'll run through the majority of their products that they produce out at uh, Vessel Studio in Pittsburgh with that color, depending on how expensive it is. Uh, did you hear that? Uh, I heard this weekend from a guy who said that uh, Drew was mixing all kinds of his own uh, op opalescent colors and opaque colors. Is he? I think that's, uh, yeah, that was what we were talking about, and he has been mixing a ton of colors, both him and Janine. Pretty sure he just took a course on it because they got a smaller furnace that's perfect for just mixing their own colors and holding nice. a small pot. That's sweet. It's pretty cool. Whoa, I see the shrubbery moving in the background. Yeah, something just happened back there. A gorilla? Like gorilla. Or maybe a panda bear. That was a bamboo. I would love to cuddle with a panda bear. <laughs> What's happening, Don? If you guys out in the chat world could cuddle up with some giant beast of an animal, what would it be? Remember the lady who loved Chris? He's my gorilla. It would probably be some sort of a giant cat for me. Oh, yeah. Like I like panthers or something. Yeah, like a big black cuddly panther i might die from the experience but if that's the way i go i'm not mad about it yeah i mean you could go quick i fixed the uh footing tool today dad all right well it's always fun on goblet night guys because i love making goblets this one i'm gonna get nice and hot and i'm gonna come out i'm gonna hold it up and spin it just the right temperature so it drops down low into that margarita shape you're gonna see it happen right before your very eyes Do you have the wooden jacks at all? Park trophies? That'd be them. The chofs? The chofs? I don't because I don't have any. What happened to them? I retired them. <laughs> I sent them out to the great park trophy graveyard in the sky. I just mentioned to Chris that I fixed our footing tool here. This is a tool just like our wooden paddles, the footing tool, and the park chofs which are jacks with wood tips on them. Paddle. They're a tool 
and some might say like our claw that needs to be continually upkept and remade and very well maintained. And depending on what kind of work you're doing, if we were going into Margaritaville for a serious long time, which may happen on one of our collectible glasses coming up Clear here for the bit, Michigan room. Size. If we're going to make 50 margaritas, then we may just sculpt our own set of parchofs for the product line. But the amount of products that we make that you actually need parchofis for at the studio here and the, the wide range of glass blower talent in the studio doesn't quite call for a nice set of chofs. Jake, can I ask the abbreviation of everything? Is, is there a reason? There is a slight reason as to why we abbreviate the things that we do around here. And it's because when we blow glass, either here at the studio, the Royal Glassmakers at the Renaissance Festival here in Michigan or at Arts, Beats and Eats, we're performing at the same time. And when we do happen to say, nice hand, oh my gosh. Oh, baby. <laughs> when we do start to explain the process multiple times from the left and from the right, we like to get a little bit, you know, different with it. Switch it up. Add our own lingo. It's what differentiates us, and it's kind I'll of a away. fresh one. I did already put the QR code up, but the table is live. Oh, baby. Information from Bess. I don't need to repeat it, folks. It's on the screen. What did she say? Tonight's table's live. Okay. Who's watching the time? We what time it. is it? Margarita time. Yeah. No. The table is live. The table went live. We were been so enamored with what's going on. Nothing so wrong. If you are I interested think that's... in shopping, yeah. the table is live. Thank you, Joey. But there's lots of cool things happening here. Oh, yeah. This is super difficult stuff, folks. The stretching and the elongating the glass and sticking it with just enough heat that it will connect to the piece and stay on there. And he pushed down on the piece pretty hard there to get that to connect because it was kind of cold. But then that just shows the importance and the beauty of the punty Joey brought and the right temperature that they squished that piece together. Pam, she's coming together swellingly. Pammy Oops. Hughes said she's gotten to cuddle a koala bear a couple of times in Australia. Pammy's cuddled the koala bear? I always think their fur, Pammy, was it rough? It feels like their fur would be really rough. You know, and it's kind of weird, taxidermy animals, they're always like, their fur mm. is really rough. I think I'd want to cuddle with something soft. It looks pretty How many darn folks good. have actually uh, cuddled with a koala bear out there? Is it just you, Pammy? <laughs> snuggle, snuggle polar bear. Joey wants to snuggle a polar bear. Aren't those kind of like regular bears, though? They could kind of eat you alive. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I would like to hold a sloth. Whoa, Lucy wants to do that. Sloth would be cool. They just wrap their legs That's around your waist, and you just hug them and hold them. Any uh, blue pinchies? Up jumpers on the sides? Really go all out? Let's do it. It's goblet night. Uh, Pammy says they're super soft. I wouldn't have thought that. All Switch right. it up. Huh? Save it. All right, all right. This is it, folks. We're going to get it over here. I hope you can see it up against the blue background. You're going to be able to see it against the blue background. Bring We're going to sign it. We're not going to stamp it. Joshua said sloth smell, though. Oh, no. Sorry, Bess. So do Some people are kind of into right. that thing. Glass blowers totally Good. smell. Yeah. <laughs> and I know quite a few, few people who have uh, pretty smelly dogs. And they love cuddling with them at night. Not me. I'm kind of like. That's when you call a dog a stinker. <laughs> 
You got the forks, Jake? I don't have the forks. Joey does. It's just going to be beautiful. I'm really curious to see how this blue will change. You guys are going to see this in its live and true self during Get the Neil reveal at 3 p.m. on Thursday. That blue is still moving, so you got to be careful. I'm going to knock it right off on here. All right. That's a beauty. I don't know where we're going in here. Number one. Top left. All right. <laughs> nice job. Super tight. Super tight. That was a tasty one, guys. Out of the blue, the first blue piece that I've made here at the Glass Academy with that amazing opal blue. Come on now. It's a good one. That one will be online for sale it will at be. some point. We'll let you know as soon as that one goes live. Best is preoccupied. Preoccupied. That's not a Glass Academy abbreviation. That's just a tongue twister. Uh, she's pulling products from the table as they're selling, folks. Here you go. There Jeez. she is. Number one. Number one. You want to talk gone. about these a little bit, Shell? Yeah, let's look at the table a second. Well, I'll pick out my favorites. They're all my favorites because I made them all, you guys. And it's a special deal to get them all off of right off the street in downtown Royal Oak. Literally, Maker's Mark sponsored. This guy right here, number nine, is about as watery as it gets. And the coolest thing about this one is, is that we blew this, Oliver and I blew this in the dark. So I could barely even tell what temperature it was, but that really beautiful thirst-provoking clear crystal thumb bit with a silver blue, chrome blue thing with the rosette on the bottom. That one, number nine, is top on my list. A delicate hold he had on there, the two finger special. Yeah, and every one of them is signed Arts Beats and Eats 2023 Chris Nordine, folks. So these are collectible. Uh, they are signed by me. That's a gorgeous one. We got a couple of the Perps partners over here, number 11 and number 12. 11 is real gorgeous, iris and purple. Really nice. This one here I'm really happy about. Super comfy. Uh, that one turned out amazing. And then we've got this tasty broken mold wine glass out of the iris and purple. Look at that. This was the first piece of the weekend we did, guys. The very first piece. And you can see the signature on the bottom. It is tasty. Number 12. Uh, what else we got? I showed you number seven. This guy will blow your mind. That blew my mind. It actually is really comfortable in your hand. For a margarita, I mean, this is like the Kraken came from, I don't know where, the ocean. Got a couple of Van Gogh specials. Look at this guy, the blue chrome Van Gogh. And this was cool. We used the Maker's Mark stamp, Jake, to squash that into the thumb bit. And it actually is really comfortable. Your thumb fits perfectly right in there. So this is a perfect, perfect glass for a female because it's got a little bit of a smaller handle. But my three fingers and my thumb fit in there perfect. Check that out. That's good leverage. Yeah. We, uh, that was number five. This guy here is another Joker boy, green and purple. I love it. Super nice. Has a rosette on the back of the handle, a super big saddle. It's got silver black dusted in the cracks. Signed as normal. Number two, whoever gets number two. I mean, I kind of didn't even know if I wanted to sell number two, guys, because it was such my favorite piece. It fits my hand so perfectly. It's unbelievable. And how about this guy? The coolest thing about these pieces is there's a lot more detailed action on them because we were blowing with glass that was melted with propane. And when you melt glass with propane, you get a lot more working time. Literally, Oliver, the first two or three pieces, couldn't even get any glass out of the furnace. He'd go in there and he'd twist it up as much as possible and he'd come out and there'd be nothing on the end of the pipe. And I'd say, Oliver, what is going on? I said, you have to gather a little bit of glass up. You got to go wander around and then come back and gather more on top of it. And he did an amazing job, you guys. I'm telling you, Oliver stepped up, sweated his butt off, 
Did we even talk about these, the signature? Well, that's why we're not talking about them right now, because we're going to talk about them when we have our own sit-down personal interview. But uh, did I talk about none yeah. of them? Right over here. Well, we're going to do it now. All right, hurry up and get over there. Here we are at the Glass Academy. Oh. I just We just wanted to give a quick shout out to what happened with the show on the weekend. Um, some people are like, you're doing a lot of shows. You're spread so thin. But not really. This is how, as an entrepreneur, you get in front of a new audience. If you zoom in, maybe you can see them. Makers Mark sponsored us to come out and blow glass. This is a festival that is about 45 minutes away from the studio. We've never gone in this direction. We did our live demos. They paid for our tent, our whole mobile unit, everything we needed to show up there. And Chris and Oliver did demos. I was on the mic and we had two assistants at the table. And during the show, what would happen when we say, who's been to the Glass Academy? It was really cool, you guys, because this festival was in the, on the east side of Detroit, the northeast side of Detroit. Everything that we're about and we uh, people know is we're on the west side of Detroit, Metro Detroit. And people in Detroit, because we were in Detroit for like 15 years, know all about the Glass Academy. People on the west side do, but we got out there. We were doing multiple demos all day long. And every time we had an audience of 50 people, we would say, hey, how many of you folks have been to the Glass Academy? And everyone would be like this. Huh? And we say, you've never been to the Glass Academy? And they're like, no. And we're like, oh, my God. And they're like, tell us more. And we tell them all about the Glass Academy. And you know what? At first, we were kind of like, wow, these people don't know about the Glass Academy. That is a, a great marketing opportunity to let people know that what we have over here on this side of town, it's really, really cool. We had a great turnout, a lot of people. Maker's Mark was a really unbelievable yeah. sponsor for it us. It was really nice. If it wasn't for Maker's Mark, we probably wouldn't have done the festival. And so they sponsored it. They gave us a tent. They were the ones that made it happen that we could come out there. So we just wanted to take a minute on the show to say thank you. It was really well received. We do educational demos. So people were like floored because they had never seen this kind of thing before. So when we asked them if they'd been out to Renaissance, a couple hands came up. But as Chris mentioned, they didn't really know the Glass Academy, but now they do. And <clears throat> can I say something a little bit about the synergy between well, Maker's Mark's brand and what the Glass Academy does? Go for it. Yeah, what it was, folks, our synergy between these two companies was the recycling of glass. And everybody out there who knows us knows that we have a whole recycled line, Second Design, which is all of our recycled glass from our production and a lot of times from other production. Uh, but Maker's Mark does the exact same thing. And now Maker's Mark has over a hundred other brands besides Maker's Mark itself. And that company that is the main company that owns and markets all those brands is very, very conscious about recycling. And they saw our Gathering Point show and they were like, these guys are always talking about recycling glass. They're the perfect candidate to push our product and to talk about what we do. And that's why they hired us. So that's pretty sweet, eh, Shell? It is. So I think okay. these glasses are custom and they're still yeah. going to be on the website for a little while, aren't they? We yeah. did make them as sets. So they're set up on the website to be sold as a rocks glass set, a highball set, and a shot glass set. But we also did individuals. You gave me an individual price, so they're on there as But there's individuals. also individuals, too. But you know how to buy glasses. When you buy a set of them, they're super tight rocks glasses for you and one other person with the Maker's Mark or stamp like on the side. Alone. Yeah, and these are, are going to be one of a kind. We're only going to make so many of them probably for the next week and a half or so, and that's going to be it, guys. So you want to get this. If you have a bar, you want to have one of those sitting on your bar because there aren't any other ones out there like it anywhere. All right. So we're back on the blowpipe now. Let's do it. All right. Who's up now, Jake? You? Uh, yeah, sure. Why don't you? I'll help you. All right. Well, I'm going to switch uh, into something that we made over the weekend. It's not necessarily a goblet, but it is in the goblet realm, and it's something that's a renaissance product. These guys just experienced their whole Margarita Jimmy Buffett special over the weekend at Arts, Beats, and Eats. And we were in Renaissance land. So I'm going to be making a chalice, a Renaissancean chalice that is one of our top sellers. And we set out with a goal this weekend to make as many of them as we could. And I mean, we rotate through a lot of different products. I think we got three, maybe four done. 
and all of them sold off of the pipe. So we still have zero in the booth, and uh, I think that's a good reason to make one right now. I think so. Running out of bosom chillers, too. Yeah, we need bosom chillers, and I could show you guys the list of 10 other things we need. And that's a beautiful thing because we've just been painting the ceiling for the past four months, and now we've got a list of product to make. Yeah, and if you guys aren't familiar with the bosom chillers, uh, Joey's an expert at them. Uh, <laughs> they definitely uh, keep you cool. They are a very, very cool renaissance product that you put ice inside and you put in your bosom, and they keep you nice and cool. And the hotter it is outside, the hotter the human being is the better the bosom chiller works, guys. So if you don't have one, they, we sell them online, don't we, Michelle? No, we don't sell we them don't? online. We don't? Well. To the Renaissance Festival, get yourself one. Yeah, and we, exactly. Or we don't even have Jake any in the gallery right like now. We're order so one up on custom. We'll make you a bosom chiller right here on the show. Okay, yeah. Is my mic on? I want to make sure before I keep talking here. It is. All right. I think we made probably like 15 custom chillers over the weekend, and it's a pretty good process because everyone's got a different body and it works every different way. And that's the same exact thing with our drinkware, folks. Just like I was pointing out how Chris was holding that piece with two fingers a second ago. We've got people who say, I know someone specifically that needs lighter mugs. She doesn't have the strongest wrists and she likes to have a lighter mug with a wider handle. Some people say, give it to me a little bit taller, need a little more room for whatever. And that's the beauty of handmade work and customization. Sometimes people even say, I want a little thicker, a little more hardy because, you know, I'm a little hard on my drinkware. So you want it to be a little bit more durable. Rowdy. That's right. But that's it, you guys. I mean, talk about a weekend of, what was it, Matt holding the fort down here with classes? Yep. Jake and Joey and Oliver, uh, not Young Oliver, Oliver with me, but Oliver uh, from the Glass Academy was out in Art Beats and Eats with me. And then Jake and little Oliver and Joey out at the Renaissance Festival. That's called the and Nolan. The and Nolan, the triple whammy. Yep. So the Maker's Mark glasses, what's cool about them? We see that you guys are looking on the page on the website. You know how Maker's Mark does the wax seal, that red seal? We have permission to use that same seal. So the glass has the same mark as Maker's Mark bottles do one on sec. it, which is super cool. It's well, kind of like our GA stamp, but we had the Maker's Mark logo put on it. And so it looks like it's the red wax, but it's not. It's actually this red bit of glass that we heat up. We're just going to do this one more time, folks. Yeah. Do you want me to hold one up in front of the camera real quick, close shell for you? Not every time do we hold still. The other thing is that the red that we use for that looks just like wax, guys, but just like the wax on the bottle, but it's not wax. It's glass, and it's never coming off. It's permanent, and that thing is super sweet. Right, plan B. Why do we recycle glass? Because we can. So see that little tray over there that's got all that glass in it? Later on tonight, we can remelt that. It's not a big deal. No problem at all. And so Look. if you start making a glass and it doesn't quite go the way you want to do it, just start over. Looks like Jake's getting ready to put this into a mold. Am I correct? Correct. Blowing it into an optical mold, folks. And the, the thing about it, is this uh, the going into the bowl of tone? Nope, we're going no. in the straight ribs. Straight ribbed optics. It doesn't change the, the shape of the piece at all. All it does is put an optical texture in the surface of the glass uh, for two different reasons. One of them is for strength, and the other is for decoration. So you always got uh, ergonomics, strength, and decoration are the three things that you really have to focus on when you're making a piece of glassware. Potentially gripping power could be added into that mixture. Yeah, it does keep it from sliding out of your hand. If you did, Whoa. if you were eating like a giant uh, uh, greasy chicken wing and you had all kinds of grease all over your hands and you went to pick up your piece, 
if it had those optics on there, you would be all set. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to a Morna. She said she's so happy she found us on the web. Our shows, The Gathering Point, happen Hello? every Tuesday night. And we do some other shows like the experimental Good. show for the Neela Reveal. So Hello? if you're new to our YouTube channel, please Good. subscribe. All kinds of fun stuff on there. Take some time to check it out. And if you have questions, it's a great way to get a whole bunch of All right, we're going to do a chat during blue one of the foot. Live shows. Solid blue. All right, so he's got a real nice optically twist vessel for the top of this chalice. And the difference, uh, there's a lot of different types of chalices, but this particular chalice is one that we kind of designed. I've never seen another one like it, guys. And we started probably doing it 20 plus years ago out at the Michigan Renaissance Festival. And it's a really comfortable glass. It's very heavy on the bottom, very light on the top, very comfortable to hold. Look at those optics. I was explaining this to a lot of people out at the Arts, Beats, and Eats demonstration this weekend because I was doing a lot of twist cups. And I was telling people, twist cups are something that is a glass blowers. It's like the Suzuki method for glass blowers. The Suzuki method is a method of learning how to play a stringed that instrument. A little bit uh, more. And it's like the rudiments. Yeah, just a little bit more. And it's practicing your scales, practicing repetitiveness, and just really working on technical stuff. You gathering over that? Yes? All right. Hey, uh, what's the question of the day? Do you want to do it? The question of the day. What do we do the question of the day for? Because we give away prizes. <laughs> You guys might be lucky if you're new to the show there are some prizes we give away for the show and why we have a break in the action have you ever had a huge fail that turned out to be a great thing enter to win yeah all you got to do is answer that question have you had a huge fail that turned out to be a great thing that's a cool question because you want to think about your fails and think about the good things that come from them and if you enter this question, you send it to enews at glassacademy.com. We do a random drawing. And the last piece we do on the show is the giveaway piece. And you could win that piece. All right. Joey's got a real tasty blue gather coming out. He's coming out for uh, uh, Jake to drop it on the bottom. I'm going to get a little bit of a better paddle for this paddle in action. It's nice to have a paddle that's real flat for these. Oh, yeah, he's giving it the spank. I'm going to show you the win from last week. And you'll want to enter that contest. Why do we do these contests? Because, heck, it's fun. Who doesn't love to win prizes? I think I'm all good for a minute. We have two prizes, two contests we do every week. Doesn't cost anything. Super fun. All right. That's a, a, this is not an easy thing to do. And I remember, gosh, there was a time when we had some other glass blowers working here in the past that they just despised making these pieces because it's pretty tough. It really builds your muscles. So, like, if you want to be a bodybuilder, you could build your muscles. That's right. So your forearms will be bulging. I think I'm all good still. I'm gonna, if you I'm gonna look at the Jake's arm, see how it's glistening? It, it is no joke. It Just is nice and Just kind of riding it in there. Here. Okay, I understand. Who's been on here since the early show days? Who remembers the camera overheating? Who remembers us tying the ice packs onto the camera when the camera was a phone? When we didn't know it would be two years later and 500 videos. Yeah, we used to strap ice packets all over the camera guys that was crazy i just recently saw a picture of that and it made me laugh i don't know where i saw it on but it was but, like somebody had a phone with like ice packs strapped to it it was really crazy looking it's so funny we didn't know we're like how do we do this we give those jacks a little wax for me joy the cameras are much better we've got two cameras Thank we've you. got a backup camera in case this one overheats in the winter i can definitely wheel in and get closer shots but I'm definitely being a little All cautious right, now let's go tonight. For the squish. Because I think this could be one of the hottest days we've had here. 
we want to talk about an overhead camera. We might try that in the winter where it hangs over the bench. And so you'll get the cool. above shots. Thanks. Looking good. Lots of smoke all over Jake. So he's got that smoky cologne smell. Oh, yeah. I remember when Jake was a baby, he would stand by the barbecue and just feather some smoke all over himself so he smelled good. It was a good time. He was a smoky little varmint. <laughs> One of the things that Jake's doing on this, which is kind of interesting, I like learning something from other glass blowers, and I just learned something from Jake, which was he's using a lot more gravity than he is pure force. Mm -hmm. And I just happen to be one of those pure force kind of guys. <laughs> and I crank the living crap out of that thing when I do it. But he was using a lot of gravity, eating it up, letting it fall out and get that beautiful, elegant drop on its own. So bravo, Jake. I'm going to try that next time I do it. I usually do it right at the very end after I've muscled it like eight times. <laughs> yeah, a little extra swing. I just get a little bit of a drop out. But that looks really nice. I like it. And like we were saying before with these chalices... They're super heavy on the bottom, but they're balanced really, really nicely yeah. in the center. Well, that's how we can do like cool paperweight techniques and color techniques in the base of them. Well, and for really... Renaissance, they're a perfect item because they're nice and heavy. I need one more heat. Yeah, I'm really um, curious to see how this blue turns out here being such a thicker uh, thicker piece. The outside could turn opaque. The inside could just be opaque. I'm just not you, really sure. I did want to say, because someone mentioned it in the chat, last week, Best stayed like an hour, hour and a half after the show to figure out the tech situation. Um, we tried. We had gotten some new pieces of equipment, tried them out. Basically, in the end, it turns out that the software had some updates that we did not know about. And once we updated the software, tested it all out, those echoes that we had last week hmm? are gone. I and it's even... funny because I was doing a course as well, and they had all yeah. the echoes going on. They did the same thing, stopped the equipment, rebooted, Thanks. and everything was fine. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate all of you working through that transition with us. Shout out to Bess and Oliver for staying late last week. Oliver we'll was a, a huge brown help. Rosetta I made him Oliver. just sit there and keep <laughs> talking about nonsense yeah. so I could get three minutes of audio to figure out what was going on. And I just kept asking him ridiculous questions, and he was a good sport about it. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'm so glad we did that. We're not techie people. Um, you know, and how do you know the updates? We come in, we do these shows, we do three different shows. Oh, and we could talk about the experimental show. Yeah, I wasn't too happy about that. I did my part. I did all the right things on my end. But our editor had some issues. I don't, I don't know if that, she, it was mentioned. I didn't hear it, but I guess that uh, Jimmy Buffett commemorative uh, sentimental action sold already. It was online and it sold. Man, I got to know who had it. Nice trim job. This one's going to be up for sale as well, too, guys. So those of you who watched the experimental show last week, that's going to come down. If you want to see one of the not successful edits go check it out go under the playlist experimental show and then you're going to understand how much time and energy and how many moving parts there are to make a successful show so michelle would you say that you think that maybe the experimental show might be a huge fail that something amazing will come out of yes it's exactly what i'm saying that's why i chose the question all right that sounds good it was an epic fail, and the good news is it helps people understand how much time and energy we put into these shows, but it also is going to allow us to get even better. When I think about that question, I think a lot about like cooking or baking, how maybe things didn't turn out the way they were supposed to, but it's turned out really, really good. Thanks. Yeah, you guys are bakers in the chat. Why don't you put what an epic fail might have been cooking. Well, of course, instantly when you make it souffle. Yep. How many it goes souffles flat. have you made? Me? Yeah. I try to make them every Sunday morning on souffle day. Where am I? 
<laughs> sleeping <laughs> at noon. I'm not sleeping. At She's noon. always sleeping at noon, folks. We're going to go for a rosette on here. When you have the optic twist, that connection on the bottom is never perfectly on there. It kind of moves up and down with the optic. So I'm not liking the intention of that line. So we're going to put a beautiful, just like the beginning of the show, except it'll be an iridescent, dark, metallic gold rosette all the way around. I think those are really good things when you do the um, vanilla reveal that you talk about. Because I understand when it's hot, it's a little bit difficult to see what Jake's talking about when that pipe is turning all the time. You can't see through the heat. But when you watch the Anila reveal Thursdays at 3 p.m., you're going to see exactly what he's talking about. This might be one of those epic fails that turns out to be an amazing thing. It's not over yet. It's going to turn out to be an amazing thing because I can see it. What was the epic fail? His connection point. He didn't like it. Oh. I don't necessarily know if it was epic. It looked pretty darn good to me, but Jake's a perfectionist, and that looks pretty darn pimp. Folks. That went on a lot better. It's much Would better. Would that be like a hand tingler? What? Like when you're holding on to your drink, your chalice, it's tingling in your fingers. What? <laughs> what did you say, Michelle? <laughs> Nothing. Oh. Look at that beauty. <laughs> All right, where's the curtain? Why is Chris standing next to it like you want to be in the photo too? <laughs> I'm just standing here. We're all hanging out. When you're blowing glass, you're blowing glass right here at the bench. Definitely a blue stamper. The curtain's there. Michelle gave you the friendly reminder that she wanted to know if we knew where the curtain was, Jake. Do you know where it's at? I don't know. We did we, move we it around a couple about times. It like five times today, and there's a certain time when the piece gets taken over to the curtain. We don't need to be reminded about it. <laughs> Piece isn't even done yet. Where's the bus? All right, next week we're gonna go over the sounds. We figured out we have to download the sounds to the cell phone, and Bess is gonna be able to play some of those sounds. Which sounds? The bus. Ah. Uh, the one that's. What other sounds would be some good ones to have? A duck quacking. The sound of cracking glass, so yeah, it doesn't have to glass. come from us. All right, I got the stamp on there. We got to let it cool down a little bit, though. We're going to iridize the the gold brown, and then we'll take it over to the blue special area. The blue special area. One more equalizer. I think this might be the nicest chalice so far. If only just because it's got the blue on there and it looks like some sort of hazy, crazy situation. So, Jake, as an employee, Let's do it. you work at the Glass Academy, do you get a discount? You do. And so if you wanted to buy this chalice, you're saying you'd get a discount. Me personally? <laughs> I'm going to go for one more reduction. Thanks, Joey. It's going to give it the super blast. I'm just saying, you know, the thing's going to go for sale. All right. There it is. Shazam. Shazam. Yeah, look at me and smile. Let's just get it off here really easy. One thing I was saying to Oliver with the red hair, what Oliver that works in our studio, Joey's very aware of the camera. He knows how to step to the side and get out of the way. Oliver still hasn't learned that trick because he's still new to the glass. This <laughs> he wants to deliver a perfect product, but he's completely unaware sometimes of where we are. It's kind of funny. So away it goes into that oven back there. And bada bing. Oh, yeah. So what I'm talking about, it's a water sipping after each piece kind of day. Yeah, maybe we can now spin the wheel of shenanigans. Might be appropriate. Wait a second. Do you have a bucket of water in your trunk? You've got to prep for this thing. We're not prepping for anything because there's only a few little uh, things on there. Do you think that, I mean, I could go back to the bag and put some up so it lands on Michelle Dunks. Yeah, but there's no water ready, so, like, that's no fun. We do have Merc water. This show, you guys, it's been a long time. Let's come over here and take a good old-fashioned look. Glass, 
glass blowing. Not you guys know the deal. I'll shine my phone's flashlight on it. Where is it? Merc level. We're gonna we're gonna Where take a test on the Merc level, folks. Yeah, because one of those things on there that everybody takes a drink. I'm not oh, drinking that. Sorry. Wow. You're here. All right, here it is, Mom. Talk about peer pressure. Like, I'm sorry, I just don't succumb to that. Succumb to the peer pressure. No! <laughs> All right, what am I wheeling in on this? One? I just wanted you guys to see the Merc scale here, and everyone knows from one to ten, you got a difference of. Uh... You may have to take it to the camera. All right, I guess it's that's. Coming to you. I guess that's the case. Here you go, folks. See in there. We exchange these once a week, folks. So with that in mind, what would you guys call that on a scale of ten being the ultimate Merc? And people can remember back to when Chris did sip from the Merc bucket. It was like an eight or so, or a seven and a half, and you made some incredible pieces after that. Lick the mold. Oh God! I don't know about all that. Folks. That's when they That's right. Yeah. Robin says nine. I wouldn't call that a nine. It's pretty. I would call that a nine. Seven and a half. Does it have a scent? Getting closer. Pammy said two. No, there's no scent. I smell it. There's a scent. <laughs> that's for sure. Who's <laughs> right. spitting? Pam said that's just a two to three. Right, couple fours, couple threes, a, a six, I'm couple sixes. Stop moving on me. Quit All moving right, around, you guys. Beth. Let's give Bess a shout out. We got a lot of sporadic information on the table here, guys. Well, I was going to bring the, the pumpkin, Sorry, but never mind. Go. I was going to get a little bit of scratch going. Make sure you hit the brakes. <laughs> yeah. Hold it down for us, Joey. No treachery involved. <laughs> Show number 231. Rate two. Oh. oh. Joey wants the dunk. <laughs> yeah, let's do a fastest twi twist cup with the blue. Mm. That's going to be beautiful. So, uh, okay. All right. That's the second time I've been one away from a dunk. All right, we got a couple. Best is gonna get it someday. Best is gonna get it. You don't see the one you want today. The There's tentacule always something mug. Next week, but those are also gonna head out to the Renaissance Festival this week. Best with her super table. Show number two thirty one. Thank you, Robin, for filling in our board. Making it look amazing. Right, Did you guys? So, uh, Bess is gonna have to work on got it. Yep, Bess has got it. And now she's got the mic. She can holler out at it, too. Did everybody see the giveaway pumpkin that we exchanged? If you watched the Neil reveal, you saw that multiple pumpkins did explode on us from the show mm. um, for various different reasons to be explained. But this is the most elegant one around. It's Donna in the front office's favorite. And it's probably one of the nicest pumpkins we have around here. We're exchanging this as the giveaway pump. And someone's gonna get it. GA stamp on the bottom. Perfect. I love it a lot. All uh, right. So Joey's getting ready to gather, but as soon as he comes out of the furnace. Is that when I start it? Yep. Starts it, and then you can have somebody fetch one or you can use a blow hose. Paddle though. He's gonna need a paddle. Okay. I think one assistance on paddle, one assistance on punny to be right there on time. All right, I'll do punny, Dad. You do paddle. I'm gonna get it souped up and ready to go. <laughs> there's no other parameters except for about five. Like no, but like those are true. Nothing, but all of a sudden there's like 50 rules. <laughs> but also those are very... Rules. All right, 29. No, no. No, We're at 30 there's, seconds. There's the right amount. Yeah. 
I'm going to be ready for him when it's time. I'm not trying to treacherize him. Is there a problem? Chris is making problems. We're going to have a problem here, big fella. Sorry, Joe, you can't use the bench. Oh, see? Here he goes, folks. He's moving. Oh, Joey's using the tube. Oh boy. One minute. He's One of minute. Here, folks. He's twisting. He's twisting. Oh, look at that. Blow He's hole. blowing. He's necking. We always know when we've got your attention because there's nothing happening in the chat. One and a half. One and a half, ladies and gentlemen. Do, 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 do. That's another sound we need to add, Bess. Is it legal to use a Unspecified. Know, it wasn't a parameter. Or is it a parameter? I don't know. <laughs> no, Jake. No. <laughs> What? You want this? Yeah. Have Two it. minutes. That's the single flash situation. Huh? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you never like to hear that on the shared blow hose. <laughs> All right. There you go. What are, what's our time, Bess? Almost two and a half. Almost two and a half? Two and a half now. He's opting for the torch for the lippus. And what what is the rules now? It has to be open to at least a straight wall. Straight wall means straight up and down tumbler. I see Chris starting to panic a little. He's deep in thought. He's just Are like, you going okay, next or am I? How can I take the I'll best go of next. what Joey's doing? Add it to what I know and win. Three minutes. Three minutes. Wow, I love this blue. He's got to get it off of the pipe. And we're going to save him, right? And we're going to save it. As soon as he knocks it, it off really the pretty. pipe, I'll yeah, take that. You go blue. for the torch. Boom. Boom. 314.74. 314.74. Sure do. Dad, would you grab that stamp right there? All right, Speedy guys That's got right, it. Joey. Boom. Way to leave the path. What was the five last time? Remember that? I can I look. Know. I have them. <laughs> it does. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. Four minutes and 29 seconds, Joe. <laughs> Right. You ready? I'm ready. As soon All as you right. pull out, I'll be bringing that point to Jake. Now. Here, I go. Ready. I will say, if you miss the show for any reason, you know it's on YouTube. Always go back to YouTube. Facebook's got it live. I think they keep it for 30 days now. They must have got too much streaming because they OG videos stay for 30 days. Chris got scared, so he walked away. He's like, I can't watch this competition. I'm nervous. Just put that up for me to get hot. What do you say, Joey? Push that the right side over there is fine. 30 seconds. All right. I'm too short to Into the mold. Ball, but Jake's got it. I'm going to need a bench blow from you, Joey. Joey's ready at the bench blow station. I'll tell you when. <laughs> Great job, Dad, I'm going to need a paddle from you in a sec. Yep. One sec now. One sec. Got the shear doing the twist. The blow is happening. Good. One minute. Blow light. Squish. Stop blowing. Cap it. Oh, does he have the neck Good. in there? That's the question. Oh. Work it. Work it. All right. Let's punny her right up. No yep. This is an interesting <laughs> time. <tag>. ready. <laughs> I saw Chris pass his 
in two well, seconds there. Joey, would you get me the tweezers? One thirty. Woo wee! Right, using the straight shears. Off they Thanks, go. Thanks, dude. Looking good, looking good. I saw Chris walk extra fast to the glory. I'm gonna hole. take the one second to straight it up for bonus points there. Uh-huh. I think next time you could uh scoot the bench closer. Yeah, just glory tuck hole. it right up against the yeah, hole. Yeah, <laughs> that would be funny. Two minutes. Two minutes? Oh, you got three fourteen. Let's go. Morna said Jake didn't even take the time to get his box out for the mold. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Look at those jacks. Go, go, go. I like seeing how different <laughs> shapes come out. That's Joey's cool. is more tall and skinny, and Jake's is a little shorter and wider. Yeah. Looking pretty good. I mean, you know, kind of what happens is you find your, like, your safe space. Your, yeah. You know. Two and a half. What? Two and a half. Two thirty-three fifty. What? Thank you. You got the stamp right in front of you. Guess he's getting the next level on there. I don't know, man. Woo! Chris has some stiff Let's see it. Let's see it. What'd he get? 233.50. 233.50, folks. All right. That was definitely more of a rocks glass. Joey had more of like a uh, gin and ginger beer. <laughs> but uh, hey, what happened to Chris here? still What's a twister. On? He's heating up his blood pipe. Oh, oh, he's going for a okay. different a mold. Different mold? Why? I could make a guess as to why. All right, tell us why you think he's switching. In my opinion, and I think it's probably a wise guy's move, I think that more ribs means the glass is going to push out less, and the whole thing will stay hotter, and you'll be able to take a quicker flash and twist it with more accuracy because you don't have to reheat those 12 ribs that are thinner and pushed out into the mold. What you, is that the truth? My that, thought was that your process, process? Is, is that... Thinner, thinner optics, the glass will cool off quicker, and I can twist it and let it cool off quicker than when you have super thick optics and you got to let them cool down even more. Mm. So it'll cool off quicker. That's my That's thought. two different ranges of thought there, folks. We're going to see if it works because in the end, the only thing that matters is the volume of glass that you're working with. You ready, Bass? The volume of glass. You ready, Bass? I'll tell I'm you ready. when. Bass is ready. I just want to say, Carrie, it's a good thing they're not competitive. You uh -huh. better believe it. You're going. If they were competitive, it'd be not crazy. Carrie, not competitive. Jeez. We're going to be all thinking about this competition in our beds tonight. No, I will not be. I'm going to be <laughs> sleeping soundly, loving my bed. Much love from England. Shouts out. Into the glory hole. That was ten. Thirty seconds. Who's Eight seconds. Going? Thirty. All right. You got the you got the punty or the paddle. Get a punty going. I'll uh, get the paddle. In a sec. Punty has been called for. Good. Lightly blow. Good. Not done yet. I'm going to need a little more air. Okay. Blow. One minute. Good. Ooh wee. Tick tock. Oh, this would be a perfect sound, too. A clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Oh, wait. He's making a mini cup. Was there a size? See, move there, folks. Was there there a isn't size a size restraint? necessity, but. It doesn't have to be twisted. He did just cool the neck down with the Sofietta. Punty, he doesn't want a paddle from me. But he's got a punty from Joey. One and a half. Ooh, one and a half. Go in, go in. Here it comes. Joshua Walker asked cool it down how more. many chipped teeth do we get blowing? I do not know anyone in my... Maybe. Weller. Weller. Um, 
How many I, chipped teeth? Yep. 35 years of blowing, I have never heard of anyone with a chipped tooth. I've done uh, oh, yeah. here. Uh, you're at 156 Are right you now. Are you kidding? Joey says he's gotten two Two here. minutes. From the bullet from Oh, oh right, right, right. Oh, so they were self-inflicting. Yeah. That's better. It's like playing golf or playing like team sports. You got no one to blame Ooh, but he yourself. Got that over hot, man. He's got yeah. plenty of time to stretch. Got to be that. a straight waller. That's straight. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Two twenty-seven fifty-seven. What? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Is that straight wall? Pretty dang so. straight. Look, yeah, it looks like side. a tulip. It looks like a tulip glass. Yeah, old, uh, Look at. Well, let me show him real quick. That's nice. <laughs> oh, look at that thing. Good thing we got an annealer reveal. <laughs> yeah, we'll see that at the annealer reveal. Oh, here comes the walk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me go to the floor. Oh my Come on, god. Now. Back off. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> That's just well. It looks like I got the highest score, everybody. Yay! <laughs> Joey says he's that? got the highest. Score. I think last time I beat you by like three seconds. I think or so too. Yeah. He goes three wow. seconds. I should just went for it all, but I'm trying to hold off a little bit. I just kind of took my time. Chris <laughs> always has to win. <laughs> That's right. I'm no. competitive. No. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Hey, I'm not here to lose. That's right. Well, All right, I what's up next? Whip it up. Do we have any right on time. Draw it yeah, up. We should have drawn everything up. I don't know what happened. Sure. Or someone wanted to Remember to keep it tiny. You guys have a second. We're doing housekeeping. Housekeeping coming right up. All right. Lovely, lovely, beautiful pumpkin. Lovely. Signature underneath. Big, goopy stem. Maybe I should do the side. There you go. Okay, just kidding. Just kidding. So remember today's question, enews at glassacademy.com, the stained glass pumpkin winner. So the question was, um, what do you want to ask glass blowers? There were some great ones. So what we're going to do is either put them in an experimental show, like spitting, hang on, where you can ask them, and we'll answer them on the experimental show, or we're gonna put them in a blog or something, because there were some really good ones. Like, why don't we have a studio cat anymore? Right now, we're waiting until the Michigan room is done so that when we get the studio cat, we don't have to worry about the health code. You didn't hear that. If you're with the city of Dearborn, you did not hear that. Then we're gonna say, oh, look at this kitten, it wandered in, because everyone misses that. I really miss that. People ask about her every weekend. Uh, I hate it. I wish, I wish. And what we don't want to do is get a cat and then have the city with all the permits come in and then be like, whose cat is this? And then we don't have a home for it. Also, it's kind of hard to paint when you've got a cat around. Speaking from personal experience, cats oh, yeah. like to get into stuff. They do. They do. Yeah. So, okay. So the winner of the same class pumpkin is Coffee Cowman. Ta-da! Congratulations. Um, Sunday, we're debating switching these to Thursday, so I'm not sure if it came out Thursday or Sunday. We're a little confused. Um, have you ever considered getting custom glass tiles? Now, if you were listening earlier, you know the experimental show had a total snafu. It was kind of a bummer. So the tile question matches the experimental show that will happen this week. I just did the voiceover today. It's 11 minutes long. Great music. It'll be a lot better. You're really going to love it. Chris was here late night working on it. Um, and I was filming at night. It was dark. We were the only ones here. It was really cool. So the winner of that for a $25 gift card that can be applied towards product, towards t-shirts, towards classes is Lori Horner. Ta-da! Yeah. Thank you, Lori. We appreciate each and every one of you. If you are new to the show, doesn't cost anything. It's just a way for us to give back to get you involved a little bit more in the show. And thanks so much for joining us. Put Michelle's mic closer to her mouth. Oh, my mic fell off. You guys, like, my ear is awful. Why doesn't it stay in my ear? you got to bend it more. Do you have, like, it's bent as much as it can go. Let me give it a bend. 
I don't know. I don't know what to put my glasses. Well, look, here's for the. You saw. The small. Oh. He just broke it. <laughs> Good thing you're on the he bent it really well. I think I'm going to wear the one that's double because with my glasses and my hair. Now well, it's going to be good. <laughs> just tie it on. I'll tie it on to it's the better mic. now. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Sorry if you missed it. Read my lips. Back to the action. Shouts out to the two folks that just some, won some amazing work. So is and this what we're in This process? is the idea from Joey. Um, my God, this is a piece that's, I believe my mic is on. It is. It's a piece that's already been made by Joey one time, and he's going to make a second one to match the set for a friend of his specifically. So Joey's going to be buying this one at his glass blower special rate, which is. Yeah, that was an epic fail. I'll send the answer to my own question. You kind of look like an old school game show host now. With like this will be the third the piece of the Goblet Here Show, I am folks. At the glass Academy Live. Maybe I'll just clip it to my shirt. Bess, I did. Uh, we do have the information in order. Maybe Michelle's taking a break, but in order to get up that uh, amazing gold Rosetta chalice. That'll be on the website here now Got as well. It. There's a few pieces left on the product table, which we'll talk about. And um, I know Michelle said that if you don't want anything here today, you know, you can get one next week. But the reality is all those are going to go out to fill our Renaissance uh, shelves this next week. And they're going to be completely sold. So if something's on your mind, think about it. And maybe get that Chris and uh, really Oliver well. Maker's Mark special. Yeah, nobody buy number two because I want to have that one out at the festival this weekend for my own. Number two? Which one? Number two? The tentacle one? You That's said right. everything's blue, right, Joey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's happening, Marilyn? Watching on the YT. Anyone over on the YT right now? Hope you guys are doing well. We'd love to see where everyone's watching from here tonight. If we got new viewers being on all the road here, we've been on of all this road. We've been talking with a lot of fresh customers. This is the best way to ask us questions. We like having fun. We like interacting with you. Uh, just say hello, chat in the comments. Hi, Savolio. Very nice. Is this hollow or solid? Okay. It was a light optic twist, right? A tender twist, if you will. All right, in case anyone's wondering, one of the questions last week was, how did you guys find Joey, or did Joey come to you? It was a really random thing. Joey came to another family member who was in from out of town, was looking for some work, got passed on, and then he started working with us. Joey sailed in on a ship cloud during the pandemic he went home for a little while it was just like i got some other opportunity went to texas and just said class academy's the best i miss you guys and so you're he's like, twisting hey, it right joey if i come back can i work with you I'm guys ready when you are and we were like, yep Yep. So some of our staff are artists in their own right. Some of our staff are technicians or craftspeople that just want to work at the Glass Academy, go home and have a, a hobby or something else. Joey is a torch worker. He works with um, other soft glass. We have soft glass. He works with glass over a pipe. You'll see him wearing pendants. He has some pendants available in the store or the gallery here. If you'll remember, Jake came to us during the pandemic too, came home for and well. Oh. Oh. He wasn't ready. <laughs> That's not really what that was about. Jake's gonna leave that on the ground there to show you. It had a crack in it. He's gonna show you how fast it cools off, but also the true color anything? of it. 
Chris and myself started the Glass Academy in 1990, no, 2003. Prior to that, we had a company where we sold wholesale glass to galleries around the US. We were about 300 galleries we sold our work in when we decided to change gears and open the Glass Academy. Changing gears again, we added a liquor license Another this year, volume. and we're also going to have an event space. So if you want to come into town, throw a party at the Glass Academy, you may now do so. So one of my friends called herself an artist educator, and we call ourselves artist entertainers. <coughs> because we can. It's live. Chalice is live. And it's gone. And it's gone. And just like that, the chalice was live, and it was gone. Someone's got some quick fingers, folks. Fingers. Son of a gun. Quick fingers. That's good. Dropping this on the marber. I think it's like a matter of luck. You know, you kind of want the piece, and then all of a sudden you're like, I think I'm going to, and then boom, you get it. All right. Is this the footing tool that was out at the festival? What's happening, Brendan? Oh, that's the one you guys brought back. And you fixed it? Yeah. That was disappointing. When I tried to use it for the first time and it just fell apart in my hands. I had, it was like halfway there, I think. I didn't notice it, but every time I opened it, it would get floppier and floppier. And that's just bad news. But it was an easy fix, and now I think I know how it really goes together. You just got to replace the metal because it, or the water it rusts. Ooh, Except that time it that. looked like it was like staples. Was it staples well, in there or was I it little nails? It with a staple gun, but you can use nails. The nails, I think, might hold for a long you time. You can use copper or brass nails and they don't rust. And you use but those leather. ones are steel. Those ones might be stainless. I don't right? know. It's what? leather? Leather? Yeah. Well, we're using uh, like uh, strap material. Strap material. Let me know. Material. Are you ready, Joey? I think part of the quickness is I uh, I post is the I? QR code about two minutes before the link goes live. You have in the a chat. tool right at the bench. Okay. It's the QR so code I'm gonna, special. I'm going to drop it on the bottom of your folio. Yeah. How many of you guys have actually used the uh, QR code on the screen before? Is it something beneficial? Because what Bess is saying is instead of you guys going to a Give new browser when, when you're something ready. goes live and having to open it up on your computer yeah. or on another. Uh, tablet or whatever, you can just scan the QR code and boom, you're on the page with that product right there. So our streaming app gives me uh, stats and we've had 10 QR code scans this stream so far. 10 QR code scans. So, so the folks do be using it. I think it's going to be okay. Just, to, just let it sit for a second. Perfect. See that? Oh, yeah. Flatten it down. Nice squish, Little Joey. Spin. They don't Little walk spin in fast. front of the camera. That's essential, too. There you go. Here he goes, right to squish town. With power, with ferociousness. <laughs> and just for the record, the longest drop, folks. <laughs> Wow. All right, I have another question. Jake? <laughs> There's one side that's a little better than the other, Joey. Is your you're mic on, that, Michelle? So. I think you're using a good Is your mic on? I wasn't having any fun. This wasn't really uh I might need to change correctly. your headset out. That's looking better. You really got to just get in there. You can't put that away now. Once you do that, you can't go back in and do it again. You got to use it once. Otherwise, you just burn up the footing tool. <sighs> that looks like a perfect match. 
It's perfectly symmetrical, that's for sure. All right, they're saying they don't like QR The people don't like QR codes? I saw a couple people saying they did like them, so. Yeah, one, it's one person says they don't like it. Got a difference of opinion. All right. Crinkly noise. Bess is going to check if she can hear me now. We've got backup. Oh, way better. Headsets. Way How better. did Chris's gallery show go? I want to get some information on that first, but I want to say that I don't necessarily hate QR codes. The only time I hate them is when a restaurant doesn't have a paper menu. Yes. And they're like, here, just scan this because we can't take care of our menus. That's all I'll rant about that. Yeah, not so far. It's like, did I want that one or that one? And How did scrolling. your show go, Chris? You this guys, last Thursday, gallery opening show special. The gallery opening went amazing. It was unbelievable. Uh, I sold a couple pieces, and it was crowded as all heck. It was packed. And Rita, the gallery manager, Rita Malone, uh, she did an amazing job. She had her work in the show as well, too. And she just, she put on the show, guys, and she did an amazing job. Whoa. We got this puppy. What sound do we need for that? Something good. Yeah, something good. We're going to have to spend a little time thinking about that. You're very welcome. I call making the uh, giveaway, or at least half of it. But I want to start the giveaway. Huh? We no. got 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, we're going to make a mini gob. Did you have a plan? I wanted to do one of those ones where you do the squash stem. We could squash do, stem? We could do one that we do a long, hollow cylinder like a twist cup, and you neck it in the middle, and you make half of it the foot. Okay. And those are quick. We could do two of them. You could do one, and I could do one. How about you do the shape, then, and let me put an avolio and a foot on it, and we'll make it mini. Huh? Yeah. All right. What other you, sounds would you guys like to hear? A scream was good. The bus. Yeah. Crunching glass. I think the bus. We got the bus. Fart noises. No. Fart noises. No, 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 no. We are not 12 year old boys here. Or are we? You trim the top of the glass because one, that's Looking complete nice. control of the size of the cup of the goblet. You also thin the walls up top out by pulling it out. So you thin them out and then you trim it to the size that your yeah. brain is wanting it to be at. <laughs> one of the sounds i wonder if we could tr make our own sounds i really like the sound of the ribs like when you're using the jacks if we could make really a cool. sound like the perk we could that'd be real nice <laughs> the puffer chatter. The sound of mushrooms getting rolled in glass, canned mushrooms. That was, that was a, a fun classic. noise. What? Uh, just you mean it's uh, just go for the inside only. Flare it from the inside with the jacks. 
You just got to get it out and you got to work the jacks like this. Right from the bottom on the inside, just all the way out. Work it out, guys. That's work right. It, just work, work it, it out. out. Just fix it, Joey. Yeah. There you go. It'll happen real easy. Nice and smooth. Great time for questions. Who's got a question? There you go. Bring it all the way out to the surface. Bring the whole thing out nice and fast. There you go. And, and doing it a little bit quicker like that helps because the centrifugal force spins it out. You got it. Looks good. GA stamp? I don't know. You don't stick in a GA on it, are you? Yep, and I got the I got the forks for it. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Lovely, lovely. Of course, we picked blue fabric and we're making blue glass. Look at me. Cheers. That's all good. And that's kind of the the name of the game. Carol said the sound of the GA stamp. Like a squish. That's a great idea. So us as glass blowers, there's a Facebook page we all follow, and it's different glass artists doing different things. There is a studio for sale in Massachusetts. If anyone would like to buy a barn with one acre, whole shop, a little smaller than ours equipment-wise. 450,000 turnkey operation. Do you think you want to be a glass blower? There's your opportunity. Only 400,000. Yeah, jump in. Move to Massachusetts. You got to build a house or apartment in the barn. Reach out if you guys are interested in that kind of opportunity. But I know some people are like, hey, in retirement, yep. I want to do this. That's just funny. That's the case. Now is your chance. Look at that teamwork, man. All three of them in on this goblet. Love that. I heard it that time. I got her. Whoa. Got her. Whoa. Look out for that chair. Oh, yeah. Nice talk. Nice talk. I was aware. That's tight, Joey. All, All right. right. Let's nice kiss. Sweet. Again. Let's Ramisha. go. I don't know if I'm saying your name, Ronisa asked, uh, can, how long uh, to reheat a piece? Can you work on it all day? Uh, we'll you table? Technically could. We'll go over the table real quick one last time here. You technically could, but the longer you reheat it, the more displaced your heat gets. And on thinner pieces, it's not really a good thing because on this ridiculous, perfect margarita glass, this would be the first thing going in, the last thing coming out. You saw there when Joey tried to knock it off, a little piece of the punty actually broke off. It was so cold. So the longer you work on a goblet, especially, the more this part cools down and starts creeping up and the more chance you have to break it. So you don't want to work on it all day. That's why we do things fast. The speedier, the better in a lot of cases. Some there cases are, you got to slow down, though, too. Yeah, there are some people that do really thick, heavy stuff, and they spend hours making it. My favorite one on the table. This is the Loch Ness Monster. The Kraken. The Kraken, straight from the lagoon. Uh, really cool piece with the stamp on the bottom, hand signed, electric blue, supernatural tentacles. It's a beautiful thing when you have the ability to get tight and crispy lines, like up here, like these straight ribs on the body, but also get natural flowing tentacle shapes. He's got multiple twists on each of them. It takes a lot of wrist action, and it turned, excuse me, turned out really, really crisp this one's just your classic uh glass academy mug right here gold and the perps with a watery thumb saddle it's just straight out of mug town and it just is a great thing if you guys have never bought a mug before to have a transparent purple handle like that lip and foot full gold body everything about it's classic the handle squished on perfect the thumb saddle is juicy the stamps right where it belongs got an iridescent sheen to it what do you think ounce size ounces i'd have to say maybe like 18. 18. i said 18 at exactly the same time we did say 18 at the exact same time 
So Final that's piece. the table, you guys. These are going out to the Ren Fair. You all will not see these pieces again, very likely. We've got multiple different gigs going on, and we want to be spreading the love they to each spot. They leave the building on Thursday, so this page is up until Thursday. Yeah, and so we got to give you guys yeah. a little love. They're bouncing between the Royal yeah. uh, Royal Oak here to the Royal Glassmakers, so you guys are Royal Oak, chance here. Royal Glassmakers. I see this royal theme with you guys. So what's the deal here with the giveaway, Chris? We've got 15 minutes. we got 15 minutes. It's got to be some sort of mini gobletto. I'll blow up the top with a stem, and then you'll put a foot on it and punny it up. I'll Perfect. give it to you. You'll put a foot on it and punny it up. All right. <laughs> Joey and I, like, and I'll do whatever. <laughs> he's got a little hat on, a little <laughs> ice pack. Look at that. That's that ice cold diaper special right out of the uh, freezer. You can use that in any sort of direction you need. There we go. Whoa. Whoa. He's out of here. We got all the molds out. Chris is going to start it up and we're going to kind of see how it goes. All right. So Julie Finn is interested in buying the place in Massachusetts with Carrie. Mm. They, they can switch careers. Julie and Carrie are going to switch it up and make it happen. I like that. One of the reasons we did Royal Oak was, you ever like uh, go to feed your kids vegetables and they're like, I don't want to eat that. And you have to like do it seven, eight, 12 times. I hear it's 12 now. It used to be seven. There's so much information coming at us from all different angles that now you have to hear something 12 times times before it sticks in your head so as far as glass academy goes the new people in royal oak that just saw us for the first time there's number one you gotta hit them 12 times before that audience knows we exist how does one enter the giveaway upside down <laughs> the giveaway you send your answers to enews at glassacademy.com Email address is on the screen. Yep. Best put it on the screen. I don't see, see it on it. my end. So lovely. Uh, once you are added, added to our database, you'll get an e-news on Tuesday. You just hit the link when you get it. Sometimes they come out in the morning. Sometimes they're in the afternoon. Sometimes right before the show. Jake, can you pick up that foot? I think it's room temperature now. Can you show us where it was cracked? Yeah, I'll take a look. Now, we don't normally pick up glass like this. He's testing to see if it's cool enough, and maybe it's, it's still, not. I mean, it's. I could pick it up, but I wouldn't be able to hold it for long. All right, we'll wait. Probably because it's so warm in here, too. It's not yeah. really cooling off. Is I'm this the blue glass? Hello, Joey. I think it is. Hard to tell. You good? One of the things I talked about in Royal Oak was Hello? rotating the pipe is how you keep the glass Good. centered. It's a tool a lot of people forget about. It's one of the coolest tools, 15, very mellow, very subtle, but super Too evident. Thin. It's pretty thin, but yeah. it's got it a really like. cool reaction with the blue, though. The way the blue becomes opaque and transparent is based off of the temperature of the glass at all different moments, the way it heats up and cools down. So... When he went into this optic mold, he kind of, by blowing it out so much, lost the optic texture, but the color pattern stayed from a cold spot and a hot spot. It's a pretty interesting look. Right now in Dearborn, to answer that question, it's 85. It was 90 earlier. Humidity says it still feels like 89, though. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I'm like, it doesn't feel like a cool dot. We do have this giant exhaust fan that we turn on, which is amazing. So if it does cool off at night, it sucks mm. in all the cool air from the outside. Battle. Part of the problem, though, is the Mission bricks, hard. once they're warm, the building itself stays warm. Lighten up. It's great when the fall hits because we stay mm. warmer for a bit of time. But can be frustrating in the summer. I'm really looking forward to hooking the camera above the bench. I think that's going to be a great setup. We're going to do that when it cools off. Footing tool too or hot thick footing tool, probably. Hanging and everything right now. Right. Linda's hopping on a plane. Safe travels, Linda. Even though it's little, I mean, should I try it? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it with the blue. 
I'd like for the giveaway one time. Are you guys switching this up? Yeah. I like that. Adding a separate piece of glass now. This is still some blue glass, nice and hot. Using that fancy dancy footing tool. This is one of those things when it's spot on, you just feel it. it feels great. When it's off, you just want to scream. Mm -hmm. Feel margarita coming. Mm -hmm. Is this a mini margarita? Is this a tequila glass? I think it might just be a opalescent agave. That looks like blue agave. The opalescent agave, blue agave special. Yeah. A Jose's cup. Yeah, we might have to make some shot glasses just with this, huh? Mm. Yes. When we have like 350 different products, it's kind of difficult to be like, that's what I was having a little brain conundrum with this morning. I was thinking about the blue and I was like, oh, we got to do some of those. And then I was like, oh my God, we got to do some of those. And those. Hey, you know what? I just, the slug, we can name like minty, not minty, like cool blue. We could do a series of slugs that have ice blue eyes, the chill slug. So oh, many I'm opportunities. Gonna say I would love a nice bright blue slug. Yeah. Some really bright white eyes. I like the blue agave right there. Or maybe a touch of yellow in the eyes. Some... All right, this is the giveaway. You still you have time to rip it open, Joey, and I'll put a rosette this. on it? Where's the rosetta going? On that connection right there? I that platform? Or leave it? That's a perfect connection. I say leave that puppy. I mean, it just looks like it's asking for something. I think it's pretty nice, just All beautifully right. simple like that. Oh, no. All right, margarita. Open it up straight the and then right just hold now. it up and let it squish. So you know, or oh, the jacks. Yeah. Yep. I like that hollow stem. Me too. It's cool looking. It's really I'm sweet. How about bruised up everywhere right yeah. now? Close it off and get the ram here. jam. From carrying that bin into run fast. <laughs> Well, I'm right, wheeling in on the last part of this piece. Small hole. You can see the light color slowly cooling off. I love it. When he comes out of the glory hole, everyone steps closer. Ooh, ah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> now they walk away. In two seconds, we'll all be back at the bench. <laughs> That's right. We're all just giving the them heat. the big eye. <laughs> That's all right. Don't mouth <laughs> If you are a VIP subscriber to our YouTube channel, thank you so much. Uh, we will Bicycle, have a couple baby. surprises Bicycle. coming Bicycle your quick. way you in mid to late September. The website's having an All update right, and to, to do what we want to do, we're waiting for the website update. Pretty cool. I'm happy with Shopify. They keep adding new bells and whistle, whistles to the website. <laughs> so stay tuned. Lots of good things coming. Did you ever see? You no, know, it's deep concentration That's when none perfect. of them are talking. It's nice it's awesome. I agree. You could put like your favorite earrings in there, change ice cream sundae. Not One all of scoop. us are tequila drinkers, please. <clears throat> Stamp coming at you. Yeah. I want to remind you all the pumpkin show is coming up. VIPs will get a perk for that. Um, October 17th, mark your calendar. Do not say we did not warn you. October 17th, save the date. We're going to put some of those dates in the E News. I like the clear top. Want to make sure clear to open it, rim. mark your calendar.
Chris is the only one who cuts in front of the camera. Everyone else goes that behind. That was an emergency. I had to. We needed a stamp. <laughs> you started walking the other way. If I did this, it'd be a different story, everybody. Watch out, folks. Nice. He's a cutie. Work. All right. I guess I'll take it over here. Why don't you take it over there? Lovely. It's almost the same color as the background. It yeah. is. I like the shadow, too. All right, I got a gray for the background. Maybe we'll switch it up for next week. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is coming to an end. Kathleen said she would put jelly beans in it. Say that again, Beth. Kathleen said she would put jelly beans in it. Ooh, jelly beans sound kind of good. Well, whoever wins this puppy can put whatever they want in it. Really? There's no rules? We do recommend tequila, though. Not everyone drinks tequila. But we recommend it. It's just like the uh, fastest twist cup. There's no rules, but Chris is going to set parameters anyway. Nice job. Nice <laughs> Super job. Super nice. All right. All right, folks. That was another amazing show. Show number 231. We're getting up there, folks. So the goblet shows are on what? Uh, the first, first Tuesday of every month. The first Tuesday of every month. I love it. Yep. That's goblet time because we love doing it because it's challenging. We didn't really have any treachery today except for this piece. Oh, yeah. Can you show them now? Oh, yeah. That thing went explodo like Frodo. But really, when it sat down, it was because we didn't have the paddle in the garage. So we put the paddle in there, and we kind of forgot that it hadn't been in there that long. I heard it as soon as I set it down. The crack started right here. It was like, tink. Those are the unfortunate things. That happen when you're blowing glass, guys. Treachery. But uh, remember that these pieces are going to be the feature table pieces are going to be online. And remember, they're going to be up there through what, Thursday? Probably Thursday. I'm going to pack them up on Friday and we'll take them down to the fair. Yeah, so, and they're uh, all signed. And then also, how long are we going to have the Maker's Mark custom ones online? The rocks, shots, and highball. We'll keep them on. I for don't a know. We're gonna have to figure that out, you know, because they're bar color. They're the special Maker's Mark. We got to talk and be a collaboration with Maker's Mark, so we're not uh, pushing that promotion any longer than it needs to be. So we'll keep you in touch with that. But if you guys are interested in that, I just suggest get it done sooner rather than later. And uh, when they're gone, they're gone until next year, maybe when we do something with these guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. We had a great show and. Uh, Look forward to seeing you all real soon. Woo -hoo! All right, make sure you watch the, the credits. VIPs. All right, bye bye.